Amen. Thank you, Lila. That was great. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you doing that. All right, if you will, please take your Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 44, Isaiah chapter 44. And, um, you know, when I was just missed, I was, I was away because I was preaching for, um, for a High Point Independent Baptist Church. It was their 15th anniversary. And uh, so they had a, uh, just uh, some services. So I was there, preached uh, Sunday and then Monday and then Tuesday. And man, the, um, the auditorium was packed on Sunday. And that was just very, very exciting. Uh, I don't know, it was a bunch of visitors and, and uh, the auditorium was absolutely full. And they had, had somebody baptized. And, and uh, praise the Lord, it was just fantastic. And, you know, it was a real emotional day, I think, for everybody because, um, of course, uh, Brother Scott and Jen Kenoyer and all their family, um, I think they left, they had six kids, right? And, uh, but, you know, they had seven kids and, and uh, serving the Lord. And, and then, you know, as we know, Scott just died. God took him home. And so... Uh, Brother Joe from our church um, uh, went up there with his uh, six kids. And, uh, and, you know, so we were rejoicing that the church is still going and God's blessing. But at the same time, you know, we're, you know, missing Scott real bad. And so it was lots of, um, lots of joy and happiness and lots of tears. And, but it was great. They showed on... Uh, Monday night, I think, they showed the uh, deputation video of the Canoyers, and that was, whew. but but the amazing thing about it is, it seems more relevant today than when they went there, the, the areas that he was talking about and stuff they're teaching in school and all this stuff is, was incredible, um, and so we we're excited that God is just still working, and, and uh, man, just, uh, you know, there was one lady there, and I got talking to her. I'd never, never met her. And, um, and I said, so, so what's your testimony? And she said, well, I got saved here. And I said, um, so tell me about it. And she said that um, she was from Jamaica, and, you know, she went to some churches there. And when they came to the States, they went to some churches here. And she said it was just was just empty and she said she just she was just looking for God and the word of God and uh, she went to um, one of the Kenoyer kids I think Josiah worked with her at uh, Dunkin's or something, Dunkin Donut or something and invited her to a youth activity and um, she's not a teenager but she came to the youth activity and when they were at the youth activity, they were sharing testimonies and having uh, preaching. And she said, this is it, and got saved at the youth activity. Wow. And, um, and she hasn't missed since. And she's a soul winner and, and uh, just excited. And, and uh, man, just, just stuff like that. They, have, they started a bus route. They had tons of kids. And, um, and uh, one girl said, you know, the only place that I get hugs and love is at church. And, uh, you know, just the kids were just all, it was this great, great day. So just like here, amen, just like here. And uh, but I just, I was, I just felt at home and, and um, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, you know, like, it was like 15 kids there. And I was like, well, they're not kids anymore, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the young adults and, uh, you know, a few teenagers there. But uh, I had them all together. I took their picture. And I'm going to call it the uh, Patuxent Baptist Church Nursery Reunion. <laughs> because they were all in our nursery. And it was just... Uh, 
is awesome. It's awesome. So, so uh, that was great. Well, I praise the Lord for being home and just already hearing testimonies. Plus, we had a baby, you know, grandbaby. Amen. So that was awesome. Yeah. I clap every time I hear it. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> uh, you know I was talking to Charlie before church, and he said, hey, pastor, I got a job. And I'm thinking, that's great. But I've seen that happen before. And, um, and I said, where are you working? He said, Popeyes. I said, okay. I said, you know, you know what that means, right? What's that mean? I know you were, Brother Rich. <laughs> no. What's that mean? You get a job at work on Wednesday and Sunday. And I said, Charlie, man, he said, Pastor, I told them I will not work on Sunday and Wednesday. And they said, okay. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's huge. That is huge. Praise the Lord. And then uh, Joan sent me a picture, was it today or yesterday? And um, remember they started that Bible study at, uh, she goes to Maryland uh, University, and they started a Bible study with, uh, you know, Zach Campbell works with the colleges and stuff like that. And so they started a Bible study last week, and they had one person come, and praise the Lord for that. And um, she sent me a picture today, and the room was full. And she said, well, there's a story behind that. And I said, well, I can't wait to hear it. Um, you know, you go from one to full. And uh, full of college students. And um, so they were passing out flyers for the Bible study. And there's some guy that got a flyer. And he's on, what, YouTube. And he has, like, almost 8 million followers. And he, I guess, said something. And the room filled up. And uh, I said, you know, God did that. Wow, that's great. I mean, that, that guy came. And, uh, and then, you know, the room filled up, and uh, said, God did that. Amen. God did that. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. Man. All right. Uh, Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44, please. Isaiah chapter 44, and this is something I think about a lot, and um, um, I've shared this, these thoughts with you before, but I, I go over them more than you hear them, okay? Isaiah chapter 44 in verse 6, verse 6, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, he says, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. I mean, he's the beginning, the end, he's the first and last, and he said, and there's nobody like me in between. I mean, there's, he's the only God there is, true God. Verse 8 says, fear ye not, Neither be afraid, have not I told thee uh, from that time, and have declared it. Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? This is God asking the question. Is there a God beside me? Uh, now, God knows everything. I talked to a guy recently, and he said, well, I don't believe in God. I said, well, I said, you, you have faith that there's no God. But you don't know that because to know that, you'd have to know all things. You'd have to know everything, and you don't know everything. So you're hoping there's no God. You can't, you can't, you can't prove there's no God, right? I said, so you just in your little mind decide there's no God, and so there's not one, right? And it doesn't work that way. And, uh, but God knows everything. God knows everything. And God said, uh, 
Is there, is there no God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any God. The God that knows everything says, I don't know of anybody else. So that's God is saying there is no other God. And uh, we understand that. We know that. Um, so uh, let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, and God, we uh, rejoice in you. And God, thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And, and God, thank you for people who um, want to stand for you. Thank you for Charlie just uh, wanting to get closer to you and have you back in his life. Thank you that uh, Joan is willing to sponsor that Bible study. And, and God, thank you for working there. And Lord, we just ask for your blessing upon us tonight and help us to uh, live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to just uh, share an encouraging thought for you to help us uh, along our journey in life as, uh, you know, we're, we're out and about and, and uh, you know, want to reach lost people, right? Um, the Lord says here that there is no God beside him. Now, we all believe that, you know, it's Wednesday night, you know, this is, I'm preaching to the choir now, right? Choir would be a great thing to have. And uh, anyway, um, we, we all believe that. We worship the true and living God. That's why we're here tonight. Uh, we believe that he is God. So we also believe that he is the best and he deserves the best, doesn't he? Wouldn't you agree with that? That God deserves the best. Um, now, hold your place there in Isaiah, because we will go back there. And turn in your book, in your Bible, to the book of um, Mark. The book of Mark, please. <clears throat> I think Brother, Brother Joe has to finish that message. He didn't finish the one Sunday night. He, he, didn't, he didn't finish. He was going to preach on the Jubilee and he never got to it. So how can we survive without a Jubilee? Okay. We've got to wait 50 years. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. And uh, verse 28, please, verse 28. So we believe that God deserves the best, right? Verse 28 says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together and perceived that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Like, what is that big? You know, when you meet people that, do something great or their success you, and people always ask what's the one thing if you could give me one thing and it's usually not one thing it's like a lifetime of work and labor but they, they want to know that one thing well they that's what they're asking Jesus what's the one like if, if there's one big important thing what is it which is the first commandment of all and Jesus answered him the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Just like we just read about. There's only one God. And then verse 30, he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart. And with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength that's what he's saying is that's what that means to love God um, is to love him with all of everything this is the first commandment and the second is like uh, namely this Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And there is none other commandment greater than these. 
So that's, that, that makes sense. If there's only one God and, and he is who he sa- says he is, then he, he deserves the best. I mean, he saved us from our sins, and man, he loved us so much. And Good night. Uh, he just deserves everything. That's why the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. It just makes sense that he would get everything. Right? So, uh, then I had a question. The, the big question for me is, what kind of love have I loved him with? If that's what he deserves, now I have to look at Rick Connor. What, how do I love him? How, like, does he get all that? Does he get the whole thing? And, uh, and I think the more we can learn that verse and, and learn those verses and, and to do that, that's really um, a great key to the Christian life is loving God with it all. Um, now turn, if you would, please, back in Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. You should just flip right over there because I told you to keep your place, right? All right. Isaiah chapter 44, please, in verse 12. Verse 12. And, you know, there are, there's, a, a, there's other portions of Scripture like this one. Um, and... You know, this is not the first time this happens in the Bible. It's not the only time because it happens. I believe it's always happened and it continues to happen today. In verse 12, it says, The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals and fashioneth it with hammers and Worketh it with the strength of his arms, yea, he is hungry, his strength faileth. Let's talk about a guy doing iron work. Man, he's just working hard, and man, he's just not taking the lunch break, and man, he's just working, his arms are tired. Uh, He drinketh no water and is faint. And then verse 13, it says, the carpenter stretcheth out his rule. Um, so they had tape measures back then, right? They've been around forever. Um, for some kind of ruler, right? Uh, he stretcheth out his rule. Uh, he maketh out with the line. He fitteth with the planes. He maketh it uh, out with the compass and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. In other words, what they're doing is they're making a God. And man, they're putting a lot of effort into it, a lot of work. And and they want it to be just right. And they want it to be able to sit on the coffee table, like where we would put our family Bible. That's where this idol goes. And and it has to look nice. And it has to, you know, they're going to bring it in the house. You can't bring bring just anything in the house. It's got to look nice, right? And so, uh, so a special place. Verse 14. Uh, the Bible says he heweth him down cedars and taketh the cypress. You know, cedar and cypress are, are, are good wood. Uh, you know, when the Bible talks about the best woods, it's always those cedars of Lebanon, right? Uh, cedar is, uh, uh, well, at least the main parts of the cedar, the good part of the cedar is unique because it, it doesn't rot. Or, you know, it could sit in the ground for years and doesn't rot. Um, and cypress is, is, is similar to that. They, they can sit on the ground. That's why it's good to make. Uh, I was watching a, a show. One, how was the guy's name? Oh, Yankee Workshop. You ever see that? Anybody? Okay. All right. then, then you just don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, this guy could make anything out of wood. Uh, what was his name? Um, 
Abrams. It was Abrams. Norm Abrams. Yep. At the old Yankee workshop. And this guy could make anything. Anyway, he made some lawn furniture and he used cypress. And he said, because cypress doesn't rot. And I thought, that is really cool. Um, so here we have cedar and cypress. The best woods. And then then the lesser wood, the oak, but oak's a good, strong wood, and good for a lot of things and, and structures and, and all that. So these are all really good wood, right? Uh, so the, the, he, this, the guy cuts down cedars and cypress and oak. And uh, look, now look what he does with it. Uh, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. The, the thought there is, man, he makes his life better with this good wood. He strengtheneth, strengtheneth himself with the cedar, with the uh, trees of the forest. And um, so uh, then it says he also planteth an ash. You know, if you plant a tree and it comes up in your lifetime to use it, it's normally not that strong of a wood, like a, like a, like a pine tree. There's some trees, uh, I forget what you call them, but they, they line the driveway. And in just a couple of years, man, they're, they're up there. They're green and look like a pine tree, but they're not pine trees. They're like, what are they called? Green giants. Green giants. Okay, I'm good with that. Uh, but they, they, there's some, our neighbors planted some, and they were little. Now they're like, they're, they're green giants, okay? And um, they grow really fast, but those fast-growing trees are not strong, and they're not really good wood. But they're nice, you know, they grow fast. So this guy planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Um, I looked up what kind of ash tree this could be, and it really was a smaller, um, rooty. It wasn't really good for anything. Um, it's just that kind of tree. It's really not good to be used for much of anything. But the Bible says, um, <clears throat> so here's, he planteth the ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Verse 15, it says, then shall it be for a man to burn. Okay, that's one thing you can do with it. Just burn it. Uh, you know, the woods that aren't hardwoods are better to get the, the fire going than you put the hardwood on top, right? Um, and then, or a piano or something like that, right? Uh, so he, he burns it, for he will take thereof, and with that fire he warmeth, he warm himself. He kindleth it and baketh bread, right? So he's burning it, he's using it for warmth, he's... Again, he's taking the ash and strengthening himself. He's using it for himself. And then the Bible says, watch this, he bakes bread. Yay. And the last thing he does is what? He makes a god out of it to worship it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down there too. Now think about this. So here's the process, verse 16. He burneth part thereof in the fire... With part thereof he eateth flesh and roasteth roast and is satisfied. In other words, he used it for everything he could get out of it. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Ah, I am warm, have seen the fire. And then verse 17 says, and the what? The what? The residue. You know, without going into a long, deep Bible study, what do you think that means? The leftover. The leftover. The residue thereof, uh, thereof he maketh the God. Even the graven, graven image, and falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. Now, doesn't that sound silly? Like, that's not a very big God. I mean, you know, just, you're just, whatever time you have left, whatever money you have left, whatever, whatever the leftover was, that's what God got. And then he's saying, what, you know, he's asking God for help. So, so it doesn't make sense. Rightly so. It just doesn't make sense. 
verse 18, it says, They have not known nor understood. For he that hath shut up their eyes that they cannot see in their hearts that they cannot understand, and none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, like why in the world would somebody think that this is okay? He's like, you know, isn't there enough common sense around? I mean, you don't even have to be saved to, to think. It, it just seems like this wouldn't make sense. I have burned part in the fire. Yea, I have baked bread upon the coals. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. <clears throat> and shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I, shall I fall down at the stock of a tree? He feedeth on the ashes and deceived heart hath turned him aside that cannot deliver his soul, nor say there is a lie in my right hand. His heart, it's a deceived heart. A blind person cannot see. No matter how bad it looks, a blind person cannot see. And what God is saying is this guy's blind. And um, to think that that's anything. And, and the, the striking thing about it is he's satisfied with that. To give his God that leftover. Um, and then the thought again is for us. Well, our God is not that, right? Our God is the great Jehovah, the creator of the universe, the one that loves us and died for us and hears our prayers and, and helps us and, and sends, sends popular YouTube guys to the college to announce your Bible study. Amen? Others, you know, God does that. What does he deserve? What does he deserve? You know, sometimes when we have bad weather, uh, people even text me. They say, Pastor, I can't make it to church because of the weather. And then I see on Facebook or something that they were out at Walmart and, or they went somewhere else. And Hey, if you're going to send me stuff like that, don't, don't put stuff on because I'm going to start judging you. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. Like, why would you? Why would you? Why would you text me and say you can't come to church because of the weather, but then go to Walmart or Target or whatever? Um, but it's not me. Is that what you think of God? I mean, is that what God means to you? It, um, you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense. Um, People say they don't have time to read their Bible or they can't read their Bible, but they can spend hours on their phone. That's right. That's right. People say they can't stay up, but then they'll stay up all night on a game or, or doing something else. And that doesn't, I don't understand that. I mean, I do understand it that I can, I can get caught up in stuff too but what does your God mean to you and I know you don't do that because you're here Wednesday night and, uh, but I'm just saying what God is you know the Lord is not something we just check in I'm okay I'm good here it's it's w walking with God and knowing God and having a life with God is it ought to be special and real and 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 if it is then then he he would be first. I was thinking about this, and, you know, don't judge me on my illustrations, but I was thinking if, if somebody came to you and said, okay, let's say you have all the vehicles you need. Now, I'm not saying if you don't need a vehicle, but if you have all the vehicles, and I wasn't looking at you, okay? Um, but if you, have, if you have all the things you need, okay, and I was just thinking, what if somebody came to you and said, hey, you can get a brand new car for a hundred bucks a month. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Would we not just make that thing happen? <laughs> but you mess with me, okay? Uh, and if Tim looks at Zipporah, look at Zipporah right now, Tim. Say Zipporah. 
you're my sweetie. And I, I think you're, you're the greatest thing on this earth. Since they made shirt pockets. Your eyes are like doves. The mother of my children. You're not looking at her. Look at her, okay? <laughs> I love you with 97% of my heart. That just kills it right there, doesn't it? <laughs> See, you know what? It doesn't matter what you say, but when you say that, it just kills it. And, and I believe that's how most of us live as a Christian. Man, we, man, we just say, God, man, I'm, I'm in, and man... You can count on me, and I'm, I'm in, and Lord, and God, you're wonderful, and I'm raise my hand when I'm singing songs, and I'm saying hallelujah, and I'm, I'm going to fuss at those sinners. And, but God knows we're not 100%. See, what we do, what's, what's, what we do is this. Is, uh, and I say we, I mean me, hoping you're doing the same thing so you'll say amen, Okay. What we do is we start naming off all the stuff we do for God and how committed we are, and then look at somebody else's not. It's like, you know, kind of like that guy in the Bible. Remember when the, remember when the publican was praying and that Pharisee was in the back room and saying, oh, God, I'm glad I'm not like him, Lord. I do all this, and I fast and tithe. And, and uh, see, it's not that. Oh, that's important. But God just wants us. God just wants us. And a lot of times, by what we're, by what we'll give or do, is a, is a evidence of what we really, really think. That's why the Bible says, "For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also." That's why, you, that's why you made that funny face when I gave that illustration. Like, new car? Yeah. Missions? The Bible says here in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 20, verse 20. It says, assemble yourselves and come and draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations they have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save tell ye and bring them near yea let them take counsel together who hath declared this from ancient time who hath told it from that time have not I the Lord there is no God else beside me a God and Savior there is none beside me look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else I have sworn by myself and the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Now take your Bible, turn to Philippians. Ian, turn that air up a little bit. What's the temperature now, like 42? Okay, go ahead and turn it to 70. Okay. Were you cold? Yeah. Here I'm good, but my hands are numb. You know, so. Philippians chapter 2. God is so good. God is so good. Look at this. In verse 5, verse 5, 
It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And, you know, this is the God that we're talking about that we just read about that said, there is no God beside me. Uh, that, that said, uh, that he said, uh, um, look unto me all, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Remember that verse that we read earlier? Those guys carving those idols, they were making them into what? The likeness of a man. Remember the one they put in their living room? Made in the likeness of a man. And the Bible says here that, that Jesus was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8, being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. See, that Old Testament verse in Isaiah 45 was talking about him. That's who it was talking about. And see, the devil always has a counterfeit. Always has a counterfeit. People need a God. Whether it's going to be an idol in the living room or themselves. But they're going to worship something. Because the devil always gives us a counterfeit. And Jesus came in the flesh, the real thing, the greatest, the great God of heaven. And he, he gave us all. He gave us his best. And he deserves the best. The best. And if you, if you and I can get to the place, you know, here's something I've learned. The more, the more I'm in with him, the better my life gets. I was talking to a guy this week, um, and uh, it's actually somebody who visited here recently, and I just called him, and um, we were talking about, you know, living for the devil, and, uh, you know, he's trying to get help and get things right and better. And, uh, and I said, you know, when I live for the devil... I gave him 100%. I did not hold back. And you know what he did? He wrecked my life. Just like he's wrecking yours. And I said, and when I got saved, I said, I'm going to live for, I'm going to give God at least as much as I gave the devil. And God's been pretty good. <laughs> the devil, the Bible says, the thief cometh not but for to, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Hey, we're never going to go wrong by realizing he's the best and giving him our best. Amen. Fathers, we come to you tonight, Lord, we're sure grateful for you, and Lord, thank you for our church, and and um, God, I know these folks, and they love you, and they work, and they serve, um, but God, had never, never, never let us allow our service to replace our hearts with you. And God, I pray that you just continue to bless our church and, and Lord, help us to be used of you as we look to you, Lord. We sure love you and thank you. 
Bring us back to Sunday, ready to serve you, please. In Jesus' name we pray.